episodes, Same one week. week. Two That's episodes, it. one week. That's how much we Buy one, get one free. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good preview. I'm, I'm feeling good about this one. I have a new format. It's going to have more clips. People love clips of their play. Everybody people. loves watching the clips. People are big fans of the clips. So keep in mind these scores are not, you know, later in the week. This is from, I don't know, I think Tuesday after, like before the afternoon games even started. So you can't put mm-hmm. a lot of stock into these scores you see up here. Uh, any of these matchups, just looking at them that pop out to you that you're excited for? I mean, I I am excited for your matchup because I feel like that is two Titans. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're the current first place versus the previous first place. Um, yeah, time to see. Yeah, that. That's a big matchup. Um, always a big matchup, just looking at Lucas, because it's it's Lucas who's just normal cursed versus Vince who's brisket cursed. Yeah, I agree. It's, I keep waiting for Lucas to like break out and start doing really well. So like every week I'm watching his team to see what happens. Uh, mm. I like that. So Chris Altina and I are kind of both up there in first. And uh, you and I are both playing the Altina brothers. So I get scouted mm-hmm. in the game. So I am excited for yeah. that. Um, but yeah, let's go through these teams here. First, me versus Scott. And I'm going to point out that little gold around my picture. That's the gold banner, which is what I mm-hmm. look at. Just barely. Nice. I don't want to lose it. So I <laughs> win these games <laughs> for Scott with that silver banner around him there. Uh, I'm nervous. I know it's a joke that I always vote against myself, but I really think I lose this week. I, I looked Man. through, and what if you took... You were told seven? never to bet against yourself again. I know. I know, but then the numbers, I, I looked at the last four weeks. And like, would I have beaten him? Any, like, what's my record at versus him in batting over the course of the first mm-hmm. four weeks? Two, 17, and three would be my record versus batting. His batting is just much better. Uh, so that's scary. <laughs> and then uh, his, we've been asking over and over again this year, Scott's pitching for real. And I think it's for mm-hmm. real enough. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of pitching this week. For whatever reason, all my guys are starting late. And I don't know if I'll be able to use all my subs. Uh, I'm nervous. I, I think I could lose this like two to eight. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to come away with like a loss with four wins somehow. So... I don't is that is it. that your official bet prediction? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm Scott going with myself losing. Yeah. Oh well, I'm going with you. I I never bet against the lanky bird strategy. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to manage my way out of this. But I've looked at his innings pitched, and he has a lot. He's no slouch on it. I don't think I can sneak a bunch of like wins and categories by doing that. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get lucky on ERA and WHIP. I'm gonna have to. I don't know. We'll see. So something I'm doing a little different on these is I picked a key player for both teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need Jose Ramirez to do something. He's only got three <laughs> home runs on the year. He hasn't been stealing a lot. He's Remember, he's pretty much the de facto 101. I tried yeah. to trade draft positions with Cole, but I only traded the first round. So I threw away my 101 for Jose Ramirez, and he is not <laughs> – really perform. So I, I put him as a key player. If I'm going to keep up with Scott's batting here, I need, I need Jose to do something. He's got mm-hmm. his head in the game. He's, you know, he has a bad average. He hasn't gotten a lot of runs. His home runs are low. His stolen bases are low. He's looking chunkier in this picture that they took of him. Well, uh, you, you need him to be chunky. No, uh, it's the full beast. Guy. Uh, I, I don't know. He needs, I need him to do something. And then for, for Scott, Matt Olson has been low average, but eight home runs already. He's been doing really well. So he needs those home run guys to uh, keep it going and just keep doing what he's been doing on batting. Like I said, two seventeen and 3 uh, is how I would match up for him. So just keep doing what he's doing on batting and get lucky on a category or two, and he's got it. So mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So your official pick is me? Yeah. You, absolutely. I think you're a madman, but I hope you're right. Well, I, you I thought really I was a madman when you went 10-0. <laughs> it's true. I did bet against myself. 
in that match. But in that match, I learned my team's weakness isn't necessarily pitching. It's when a team can destroy me in batting. That's when I'm in trouble. And I, I do mm. think Scott and Chris can both do that to me. So we'll see what happens. Our next matchup, Nick versus War Hero Cole. So I put a little that little thing right underneath their score, the mm. scoreboard. That's if they'd played each other last week. Yeah, 5-5. Five, five. You would have yeah, got 5-5 five, five, five. with them last week. So I do think it's possible. And all those categories he's losing, wins and case, it's because he only had 48 innings pitched. If he can up those mm. numbers, I do think this could be a sneaky upset for War Hero Cole. He could get his first real big win, put him on the radar here. Uh, yeah, he I does have a – I mean, Tatis is coming out too. Yes. It's not just pitching. He – now, Nick he has did the have goat. a terrible week in batting. That was an outlier, if you're only looking at the first four weeks for Nick. He had a really down week in uh, batting. So, if he goes back to form, this could get a little dicey. I'm just saying Cole's in the running here. This isn't as obvious mm-hmm. as you might think it is. Yeah. Uh, and will Cole figure something out for saves? Because I think he's going to need a little bit more saves if he wants to win that category, and we'll get to that in a new segment where we might be able to help him. Yeah. I'll, I'll trade saves for good batters any day. Oh, yeah. Uh, Josh so, is winning. So and 10, 20 to figure it out. They're both the two new guys. We talk about Josh a lot in those recent recaps. He started winning. If Cole can start winning. We'll start talking about you, buddy. But you gotta, you gotta start winning first. Uh, my official prediction is still Nicholas, mainly because he beat me, and I can't believe that he beat me, but won't beat Cole. Yep, I, I think Nick wins, but I think it's close. I'm gonna say six four. Uh, key players here, Kyle Tucker. He's just average, average looking Joe. I mean, look at him, but he's he's just done decent. And uh, if he could start picking it up a little bit like he did last year, he was on my championship team. Uh, that that would be big for Nick. He needs to get those home runs up. He needs to return to form uh, with his batting. And then for for Cole, it's no surprise. Fernando Tatis. I mean, he's already got two home runs. He's only back a couple of games. So he's about to pop off. Uh, that's that's going to be the key to Cole's entire season. He was the 101 pick. So, obviously, he's got to be yeah. a key player. Uh, he did pitch. I mean, he did bat for the 10 caps. So, Fort Wayne pride there. I mean, yeah. Hometown hero. Hometown hero, Fort Wayne. So, he, he uh, I think he once said he considers Fort Wayne home in his heart. Mm-hmm. I, I remember him saying that. <laughs> Gone! And it's a record! But, I mean, breaking the, the home run record, the inside the parker, you know, so many great teammates that I played together that I'm no longer playing. Uh, you know, everything was special out there, and, and I'm glad, very glad I had those memories with me. <laughs> so, next, the batter battle. Ethan versus mm-hmm. Chris. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a close one, in my opinion. I, I mean, it... It really does come down to batters. I, uh, like I've said before, pitching is for bitches or betas. Yeah. Um, only category that matters is saves. You get five batting categories and then saves. That's six. You win. Um, yeah, you claim. Uh, his, his team scares me. His team scares me. Yeah, this Degrom, is, worthless player. This is going to be a test. Uh, for sure. Um, of batting. I will say that trade's backfired on me a bit. Um, he's yeah. been underperforming uh, by quite a bit. I, I now owe you a Bolfa, and uh, it, he, he's he's not been doing what I want him to do. By him, you're talking Matt Chapman, correct? Yeah, uh, absolutely, Matt Chapman. I will say though, I don't know if it's necessarily backfired or just been a wash because Degrom got injured and pulled out of a game. So, yeah, yeah, I mean... Elbow injury is never good, uh, so it might just be a wash, honestly. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but still a long season, a lot of baseball to be played. Uh, I, <laughs> I do want to mention, um, when I traded DeGrom to Josh, I said, look, 
he gets hurt a lot, but he always bounces back. I don't know if he's bouncing back here. Uh, <laughs> so I feel kind of bad. Uh, so Chris has had over 60 innings pitched every week. Hmm. And I, I do think that's a separation because you've only had over 45 innings pitched once so far mm-hmm. this year. Uh, yeah. So I do think this is a the batter battle, but all those pitching categories still count. And uh, I think he could yeah. sweep wins and strikeouts, maybe saves. Uh, saves might be important, which is why for Chris, his key player, random dude, Jose Alvar. I'm going to say this name wrong. Jose Alvarado. Alvarado. Uh, he's gotten five saves. Just a random dude in the Phillies. They use a committee. But this guy's kind of emerging. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that could that could be a... That could be something that really puts him over the top this week if he can get some saves. Uh, maybe also, Chris, listen to our segment at the end. It could help you out. And then for you, <laughs> key player, polar bear. I mean, if you're going to yeah, win the... batting, you got to you gotta have the polar bear. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, you can see right there, 11 home runs already this season, 28 RBIs, 22 oh, he's so runs. Good. I mean, he he's killing it. Um, I was shocked to see you take him in the second round in the middle. I thought yeah. for sure you would take Jazz and Pete would get back to me. Not at all. And uh, yeah, he's. I loved. It. I love seeing it. I'm a big Mets fan. Love the polar bear. He's a big, strong guy. I totally understand because I'm a big guy. I'm a big, strong guy, and just kind of jumped on me. And I thought that was kind of kind of cheap going 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 from behind. I mean. I mean, that's if you want to if you want to hold me back, if you want to restrain me, go at me like a man. Uh, yeah, I, he's he's got to be your key player. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll try yeah. not to pick him every single week for you as the key player. But he does seem critical, <laughs> <laughs> critical to have. Uh, I, um, I'm going to try to pick multiple key players just so you get to kind of know other people like players on other people's teams and stuff, too. So, yeah. Um. I'm going, I mean, this week I'm versus the better Altina brother. Um, so I, I, I got to bet on Chris. Yeah, I was hoping you'd bet on yourself here because, yeah, I'm, I'm picking Chris here as well. Uh, I, just, uh, I, I learned my lesson not to vote on myself because I'm trying to lose. Who did you pick, Nick versus Cole? Um, it's Nick. Nick, okay, we both agree on that too, okay. All right, Art versus Aaron. This is going to be a hard one to pick. Yeah, I mean, Aaron's in 12th, Art's in 3rd. Art's been getting those innings pitched. Uh, it, it's for real. He's 4-0 and in case, and he's 3-1 and in wins. He is definitely mm-hmm. juicing up those innings pitch numbers. Uh, Aaron has been below average in innings pitch four weeks in a row, although, spoiler, I've talked to Aaron, and he says he's using all of his subs on pitchers this week. He's he's going to turn this thing around. If he really is mm-hmm. doing that, he could he could buy himself could, some wins and get some it. saves. So, yeah. Uh Art is one of the people that has punted the save category. So, you know, he could start to he could get a sweep here in uh pitching. But Art had 14 home runs last week. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's scary to go against. Yeah. Uh key players I doubted this man, so I'm going to apologize. Spencer Strider he is lived up to the hype so far. I thought he was very yeah. overpriced. Uh, I wasn't sure I believed. He is 4-0 after four weeks, so went on every single start. He has a good ERA. He has good strikeouts. He's been mm-hmm. – mustache still looks good. Uh, Spencer Strider's killing it. I will say, and correct me if I'm wrong, but – Art was one of the teams you respected the least right after the draft. And uh, yeah, I, he's I, been proving you wrong consistently. He had a lot of players I did not like. And Spencer Strider was one of them, who I thought was overhyped. And it is working out. He's in third, third place. He's doing well. Spencer mm-hmm. Strider's doing well. So key player, first pitcher we've mentioned. We did have a relief pitcher in the last one, but first starting mm-hmm. pitcher. For Cole, man, Trey Turner has looked trash. I don't know if you remember last year, 
Trey Turner was really? in contention for the 101. He was a hot commodity. He still went in the first round uh, this year a lot. So only two home runs. I, I felt bad about Ramirez. Seeing Trey Turner's numbers made me feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Trey Turner, not looking great. I also offered a big trade for Trey Turner. I offered Emmanuel Class A, who's gotten over 10 saves already uh, this year, plus a win. So mm-hmm. I'm actually relieved that Aaron did not take that trade. Uh, but yeah, Trey Turner's got to pick it up. So that's a key player. He needs to get lucky in one of these batting categories, even if he pulls off a sweep in the pitching. Pitches. So, yeah. Um, I think we're both picking Art. Uh, man, close decision, but yeah, I'm going to have to go with Art. I see the path for Aaron. I just don't see it as the most likely path. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah, I see the potential for it, but I'm I'm still picking art. I'm trying to beat you in picks, so I got to go art with this one. Yeah, it's art all the way. All right, brisket curse versus the just cursed. Ben <laughs> Two teams enter. One of them's got to yeah. win. Yeah, this is uh, maybe my match to watch for the week. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Both teams this, are this struggling is... with pitching. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll see who steps it up this week. One of them needs to. Uh, I do think Vince has a better batting team. I think Lucas is ready to start winning, though. He has the brisket curse yeah. on his side. I do. I think he has something curse. to prove. We we've been shitting on him a little too much, and he, he he's getting a little boil in his blood. If Lucas had played Vince last week, he would have won eight two. Mm-hmm. Now they might have both played things differently had they been playing each other, but. I'm just saying, like, Lucas is in 11th and Vince is in 6th. It's not a for-sure blowout like you might think it is. Like, I do think Lucas can win this game. I would love to see uh, Vince, like, on Friday, have a brisket party and then completely turn this around. Uh Come back for a strong (laughs) win. (laughs) That's what's hard to... To bet on with Fence, because you never know when that brisket party is going to happen and yeah. he'll break the curse. He could just snap the curse just like that. So uh, we'll see. Vince had an off week in batting last week, even though I do think his batting overall has been better. Uh, we kind of talked about Lucas, though. I think he does have four really great batters that have just not really performed a bunch yet. So it, this one's really hard to call. I think this is the hardest match to call of the week for sure. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to come down to their pitchers. Uh, Sandy Alcantara, so dominant all last year. I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember. He had so many games where he played all nine innings and just lit it up, and he is terrible so far this year. One and two with yep. a five ERA. And Lance Lynn, 0 oh and four with a seven ERA so far this year. <laughs> I know Lucas yeah, I, the White Sox. He loved Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn was his must-have player this year. And I think that's what a lot of people are learning is uh, people who did good last season just aren't pulling their weight this season. <laughs> and Vince warned us all of that. And then uh, he should have uh, told himself because he took Sandy Alcantara. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not been good so far. So, I, I don't know. This This is a really tough one to call. I'm going to bet on the brisket curse being real, and I'm going to pick Lucas Man. to win. I was it. hoping you would pick Vince, because I also am going to pick Lucas. All right, we're, we're uh, in agreement here. I mean, I just, yeah. I'm not going to bet against a curse until I've seen someone, Absolutely. someone uh, lose to it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe in the curse and uh, pick Lucas. All right, so let's see if we disagree on this this other one. Otherwise, it comes all down to you and you and I's matchups. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, we we agreed on my matchup. Oh, we right. both agreed on Chris. So. Yeah, it'll it'll just come down to my matchup. I'll throw it on purpose. Um, <laughs> Caleb versus Josh. So Josh, the newcomer, Caleb, he only joined halfway through last season, and I feel like mm. he's kind of on autopilot, he's... so he's pretty new as well. You can't use the new card versus uh, Josh, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh's team has had more than 10 home runs once, and he absolutely dominated that week. So I feel like that's a yeah. good bar for Josh to set for himself. 
trying to get to 10 home runs each week and everything else will just kind of fall into place. Uh, Caleb has never had more than eight home runs. <laughs> Obviously, every time you hit a home run, you're getting an RBI and a run. It, it helps all categories, right? Other than stolen base. Yeah. So, uh, I think this could become a home run battle. But also importantly for Caleb is he needs saves because Josh can get saves too. He has a very good pitching team. I believe Verlander and Scherzer are both back this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm expecting wins, ERA, and whip to be pretty good for Josh as well as K's. He needs to get the saves. Uh, and maybe a way he can do it is Daniel Bard, who actually I had as a closer last year. I love Bard. Yeah. And then I saw Bard is back. he is mentally uh, not great. He did terrible in the World Baseball Championship. He is a monster. He killed one of my favorite players. And by killed, I mean hit his kneecap, uh, Altuve. And that's mm-hmm. what Altuve was missing. Altuve was my, for sure, locked in second round draft pick. And then yeah. he was stolen from me from Bard. And if that wasn't bad enough, then Bard just took a mental break. He, he couldn't take it. So he just walked away from the game for a while. I'm not sure if he's truly back or not. So we'll see what happens. But it looks like he should be a go. He could get some saves. That's, I think, a key player for her. For Caleb, is Bard actually working out? Mm-hmm. For Josh, Juan Soto. I mean, he's got to get yeah. those home runs. Juan Soto's stats don't look great when you're looking at him right now. Five home runs is good, but not great. Terrible batting average so far. Um, but Juan Soto gets walked a lot, and I think Juan Soto's heating up. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I think that'll be a key player for Josh winning this week. Juan Soto go out there and hit a couple home runs, and that'll make all the difference. Well, what do you want to call it? I'm uh, I'm I'm going Josh. I want to go Josh also, but in the spirit of maybe getting ahead here, I'm going to just, I'm going to wild card pick Caleb here to uh, split the difference. Crazy. I know. I, I I would have picked Josh, but you know, I, I feel very confident. I'm going to win my prediction of me losing the first matchup. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I feel like, this is a chance to either jump ahead or stay tied. So uh, I'm, I'm going to pick Caleb, wild card pick, uh, to, to round it out for this final pick here. So, all right, new segment, out of the week. And uh, feel free to bring up anyone you want. But I have a player who I think is a must-out of this week, big difference maker, potentially, and that's Michael King. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think he should change his first name to Saves because he's going to be the Saves King. <laughs> Clay Holmes is not working out. They have another relief pitcher also not working out. The Yankees are freaking out. They need a closer, and this guy can close. Uh, Michael yeah. King, I think, is going to take over. It still will be a committee because the Yankees are going to be the Yankees, but he's going to get the best opportunities to actually go in and get saves. I think this guy could end the year with like 20-plus saves. So yeah. even in a committee on the Yankees. So I think this is, this is a guy, if I was in need of saves, which I'm not, um, I would pick this guy up. I was even tempted to pick him up Monday because I don't think a lot of people realize yet that this is going to be the guy they go to. So I know in a couple of matchups yeah. we talked about it coming down to saves uh, with Chris. I think it could be important. And uh, with Cole and Caleb. Uh, all three of those guys, they could use some more saves. This, this is the guy you go get. This is Andrews. Yeah, we'll, we'll just see who watches the episode first. Yeah, and uh, and picks him up. He's a, he's a hot commodity. I I still think it's early. Like a lot of people aren't talking about it yet and don't realize uh, potentially how great of a pickup this could be. He only has one thousand yeah. three hundred ads in the last. I think this is showing the last week for that. So. Uh, but he will be getting picked up by everyone once he goes out there and starts getting saves. So uh-huh. if you wait, if I will say him, his name sounds a lot like Michael Caine, and I respect that. Did you know? Fun fact: Michael Caine is the only impression I can do. Uh, well, n- now I gotta hear it. 
I didn't know that. <clears throat> All right, let me get into it. <clears throat> All right, you ready? And this is not a recording. This is. I, a- I'm ready. I'm. All right. I, I want to be pleasantly surprised. I'm Michael Caine, and during the day, I was Batman's butler. I love it. Is that the is that the only sentence you can do? Or I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, I mean, you got to practice something, I guess. Yeah, it's good. Good building. That's the only impression I do. I don't do any other celebrities. Just Michael Caine. So, yeah. All right. That'll. Uh, that's all right. The end of this episode or second episode. So. Mm-hmm. Everybody have a good week. Yep.